So hello everyone, welcome and today we are going to talk about how you can take a graphics card like this and easily water cool it. So let's check it out how this works. So first of all, I want to say if you are to remove your cooler, your stock cooler, um, you are actually going to void your warranty. I'm not going to say you may void, you are going to. But considering you are using an older graphics card like I use here, uh, which is the uh, 1080 Ti, an older model, and I actually had a problem with it. So that's why I am going to replace the cooler. So why would you want to replace the cooler for once? Maybe because uh, obviously your cooler isn't powerful enough maybe it is that like mine so the issue with mine was that the fan control header didn't recognize the fan speed anymore so it boosted to full blast all the time which was super annoying and now i got myself a solution um i got myself this one or let's put it over here it's uh, a bracket allowing for a water cooler an all-in-one water cooler uh, to put on your graphics card. So that's what we're actually going to do today. And this is the Graken G12, which is from NZXT, but you can mount different all-in-one coolers. And they also have this fan included to cool your VRM on the graphics card because you are losing the, um, yeah, the passive heat pipes, but you can actively cool it with some airflow, which is nice. And yeah, and now I'm going to put things together and show you a comparison in terms of yeah does it work what are the temperatures and so I have done this already but and I can say it's actually um, much better than I expected but we will go over the results in terms of cooling performance and stuff uh, when I showed you how to put things together and that's what we're going to do now put things together and then we we'll check out the actual numbers on it Start with a quick unboxing of the Kraken G12. When we open the box, we get this disclaimer message, which basically is the instruction how you put this thing together. Then next we have the fan, a 90 millimeter fan that is provided with this bracket to cool the VRMs. We have some screws and mounting mechanisms and here we have the brackets which you need depending on if you are mounting it on uh, Nvidia or AMD graphics card. And then we have the shroud or the bracket which basically is just a way to mount the fan and the water pump housing that comes with all-in-one coolers. Before we get into mounting this, let me just quickly go over what we have here. We have my GTX 1080 Ti here, which is a blower fan style graphics card, which means the fan is turning and blowing through the card and we will put this mounting package on it. So let's have a quick look on the packaging or at the packaging. Obviously, it's from NZXT. They have a description how it is going to show in the case. You can see they have put the additional fan onto it. And also we can see which GPUs um, are supported and which liquid cooler, which means all the all-in-one coolers that are supported. It's not only NZXT's all-in-one coolers that you can use. You can use NZXT ones, Corsair ones, Thermaltake ones, and yeah, the description is on here. And I'm using the Thermaltake Water 3.0, which looks like this. And basically it's not going to mount in this place. It's going to mount directly on the die of the graphics card. But yeah, we are going to replace this cooler. So to get started, we have to take off the shroud that is covering the graphics card. And for that, we are going to remove the screws that are all around the graphics card. So these are the three on the one side. Now we're going to take out the three on the opposite side. So once we get all these screws out, we actually could remove the plate 
but for now i'm just removing the shroud so you see how a graphics card looks like without the shroud and then we are going to take apart the front panel some graphics card will have a removable front panel others won't so in our case it's two screws on the front and then it's held down by these two screws one that is actually mounted into the board and the second screw oddly enough is held in place with a tiny nut so that's the nut and let's get the top plate off so now on the front side we have the fan which is connected to the main frame but what we can take off now is the main heat spreader that is cooling the actual die and it is contact with it so on the back side again we have four screws holding down the heat spreader and we can lift off to remove the main heat spreader so once that is done we can actually proceed by removing all the other screws that are accessible from the back side and that is to remove the main frame which has a passive cooling function for all the components on the graphics card once we have removed all the screws we can proceed to removing the frame or taking off the pcb board whichever way you prefer but keep in mind there are thermal pads applied to uh, transfer heat from the components to the frame and they basically glue this to the pcb so be careful removing these and yeah so in my case i don't need the thermal pads to be stuck on the pcb because we are passively cooling it with a fan so i'm going to remove that put it on the frame and put the frame away and so we have achieved our first goal which is to strip down the pcb of the graphics card now we're going to clean off the old thermal paste that was applied um, just be careful around the die there are tiny components which you could destroy when you push somewhere too hard just be careful and yeah i'm going not gonna have you watch me do this in real time so uh, just be careful clean it up and make it all pretty and do the same with the all-in-one cooler that you're going to put on if it was used before as a next step we then have to take our mounting brackets that are included in the package either for the nvidia graphics card or the amd graphics card and we attach them by mounting the screws from the backside into the pcb and once we have both of the brackets attached we can continue putting on the main cooler but first we need to apply some thermal paste i would suggest sticking with some high quality thermal paste put a decent amount on there on the die and then you can take the shroud put your water pump in it and then put it on the graphics card it's going to slide around a little bit because there is not yet anything to hold it in place but that is where the other screws are coming in so these have springs on it to get more pressure onto the plate again hold everything in place while you put in these screws but once they are in you're pretty much done and just can continue by deciding where you are going to plug in your fan and pump header so because my pump header is bad i'm not going to put it into the fan header for the graphics card i'm going to route it uh, again away from the pump onto the motherboard and the motherboard and the fan of this unit are going to be controlled by the motherboard fan controller so and that is how it now looks like and how it is going to go into the system if you have a graphics card like i have you will have to figure out a way how to attach the front mounting plate because mine was initially screwed into the main frame of the graphics card which isn't there anymore so i have to figure out a way 
how to make this work again but as is and if your graphics card has the front plate already attached you can just take this component and stick it into your computer system so that's how you can water cool a graphics card with your all-in-one cooler i really hope you can make use of it and happy diying